I would like to invite uh, Dr. Mohan Raju to deliver the keynote uh, speak, speech, uh, which is about the health status in the Karnataka health system. Uh, Chairperson, Dr. Devadasan, my co-panelists and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will be venturing to give you an overview of the uh, present scenario of the Karnataka health system and I would be uh, driven by the thought that I will, have, I will have a time frame and I would like to finish within the scheduled time frame. Karnataka is considered to be a progressive state. But uh, considering the ranking of Karnataka as far as the Indian context is concerned, we are somewhere in the middle. We are neither as good as uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala, not as bad as uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. We are somewhere in the middle. And we have extremes of health situation. We are the most backward districts in northeastern part like Bidar, Gulbarga, Kopal and Bijapu, who can who can be compared, which can be compared to the UP and uh, Bihar. And we have districts almost like Kerala and Tamil Nadu, like the coastal region, Udupi, Dakshana Karana and all. So it is a mixture, a good mixture of, or I would I would I would rather say a bad mixture, a bad mixture of good and bad. So this is the demographic uh, scenario of Karnataka. We have a population of 6.11 crores and uh, the crude birth rate, death rate, you can, as you can see, I think we have a good scenario except that we have achieved already the total fertility rate of replacement level 2.0. Only thing we are concerned with our IMR and MMR and we have a child sex ratio which is 943 which has declined from what it was in 2001. And you can see the status life expectancy has been improving. The government doctor population ratio is one doctor for every 9,708 population. The nurse population is one for every 7,731. Per capita expenditure on health has risen from the previous years, but considering the inflation that has been occurring over the last decade, the effect of this, in, the effect of this uh, increase in per capita, per capita expenditure almost gets nullified. And the healthcare costs, as you know, True to the Indian scenario, our healthcare cost as percentage of GSB is abysmally low, 0.73. Health expenditure as percentage of the total government expenditure, 5.43. And public health expenditure as part of the total health expenditure, 14%, which evidently means that the out-of-pocket expenditure on the patients and patients' family continues to remain high. It is around 70 to 72% in Karnataka. So what are the requisites for Karnataka state to take up this universal health coverage. So these are the conditionalities which have been laid down. You must have a good leadership and governance, a well-performing health workforce, a good and adequate health financing system, equitable access to drugs and all, effective delivery of service and a well-functioning health, health information system. But where are we? Governance Karnataka has done, has done very well. As far as government, governance uh, issue is concerned, much before the government of India came out with the Central Act, Central Medical Act, Prevention and Control Act, Karnataka brought out its uh, Karnataka uh, Private Medical Establishment Act in 2009 itself. And as the Secretary was saying yesterday, we have come out with transparency in Karnataka, uh, transparency in transfer of medical officers in the uh, staff of the department, regulation of transfer wherein the everything is everything occurs transparently and posting is given by way of counseling then we have rationalized the doctors in pscs meaning that certain pscs had two doctors and certain pscs did not have even a single doctor so we have seen to it that every psc has one doctor and redeployment of specialists certain specialists were working in pscs so they have been sent back to uh, community health centers and taluk hospitals where their services are very much needed then we have a specialist cadre and a lateral recruitment, I think, which has been brought in in the last two, three years. Earlier, the, the in the government setup, the MBBS people and postgraduates used to enter the same level. Now, I think there is a lateral entry for specialists. They will enter the government service at a higher level. And that has been welcomed by the uh, specialist group of uh, doctors. And there is a bond enforcement also, considering that there is shortage of doctors in the rural areas the government has brought in a bond which is being enforced now earlier it was not enforced now every undergraduate 
and postgraduate coming out of medical college in Karnataka has to mandatorily serve for one year to the government. So these are the good things which have been done in governments. And we have brought out a PSC manual. Revision of Public Health Act is a near completion. In the procurement scenario, we have done, we have taken up the e-procurement. There is the integrated primary health center information system for ensuring the regularity and attendance of the uh, departmental functionaries. We have we are bringing in a public health cadre, and we also have brought out a policy for all public-private partnerships. As you know, public-private partnerships are one of the popular modes for introducing any new scheme, but there was not much policy or rationale or monitoring whatever was attached to the functioning and management of the PPPs and now a draft policy has been brought in. But what are the issues? Same, at the same time, there are issues. The regulation of private providers, though there is a KPMA Act, I think it's is it to uh, function effectively. Then, the, the low, then there is a low participation of the private providers in health programs and our policies are not based on sound research. Even today they uh, tend to be on ad hoc principles, ad hoc ideas, and urban health, as you know, is a very big lacuna. We have an organized system in the rural system, in the rural areas, but we don't have any organized system in the urban. Urban continues to suffer, and intersectional convergence between the various departments which are, de which are dealing in health, like the women and children department, the sanitation and uh, uh, water supply. Uh, uh, water supply, which has been looked after by the RDPR department, education. So this intersectional convergence is still to improve, and social determinants of health are hardly addressed. We have been focusing only on health and health only. So these are the kind of infrastructure. The word about infrastructure in Karnataka is that we have more facilities than needed. You can see the difference between what is required and what is uh, existing. We have more subcenters, more than what is more than almost double. Uh, what is what what what, uh, what number of PS are needed in the state? So then we have more of everything, and naturally we have a more need for human resource, which is not there. And incidentally, we have uh, private uh, uh, hospitals and clinics which number about 22,165. This is this is as per the registration done under Karnataka Private Medical Establishment Act. So this, these are the human resources we have. We continue to have shortage of specialists. Doctors are not willing to come to government service. Then we have shortage of staff nurses, ANMs, and even male health workers. You can see there is a huge shortage of male health workers. But the government, but the department has taken several measures to meet, in some way or the other, what crunch it is facing in the human resources. Like we didn't have enough ANMs. So in the last three, four years, we started uh, A&M training centers in all the district hospitals, and private people are also permitted to uh, start and run the A&M training schools. And now we have a huge overflow and uh, a huge uh, supply of A&Ms. Now we are thinking of curtailing down the courses, and also the earlier the courses used to be, uh, every year the admission used to occur, but now we, we are thinking in terms of cutting down the admission every two years. Then we have the specialists. The specialist uh, shortage is being uh, addressed by training our MBBS doctors in EMAC and LSAs. I would like to uh, comment at this point that EMAC and LSAs trained people are our mainstay for uh, offering specialist services in the taluka and uh, uh, community health centers. Then we have resorted to outsourcing of facilities, lateral entry services. Then for the public health nursing course, we, we were sending people to Varda Sevagram earlier. From last year, we have started our own course in certificate course in public health nursing, which is catering to the departmental people, and it is able to supply tutors and principal to our eligible training centers and AM training centers. And public health specialists, as there is a dearth, we are sponsoring them for DPHM course, MPH course, and recently, recently addition has been taken to start public health courses by the Institute of Public Health Hyderabad here, very much in Bangalore itself. So the issue, these are the issues, specialist availability, as I repeated, I think, uh, doctors unwilling, induction training. I think induction training is not happening to the various cadres who are working in the government. So that has to be made mandatory and uh, uh, it has to occur. And responsiveness of the workforce to the community needs, vacancies, accountability, 
headquarters stay of the workforce. I think this has been debated in the previous session also. The people are not staying in the headquarters and offering services to the community. Then their motivation levels are quite low. So coming to the finances, finances are quite adequate for the time being. The per capita expenditure, as I told you, has gone up, and from uh, uh, state health, uh, state health resource system, state health system resource center, we have done the state health accounts. It is under the consideration of the department. We are trying to do the casting of the primary health centers and uh, community health centers with the cell, with the help of the uh, finance cell that is established under KHSRDP. We are tracking the district expenditure. We have a financial management information system, which is being which is being piloted in five districts of Karnataka. Tracking of the public health expenditure is being done, and the expenditure under state and NRHM has consistently improved over the uh, last four or five years. The NRHM expenditure stands around 94 percent in the previous year. But the issues in finance, as I told you earlier, the out-of-pocket expenditure continues to remain high. And there is a declining expenditure in primary health care as has been done by a study by, as has, been, as has been seen by a study done by Center for Budgeting and Policy Studies, accountability and monitoring expenditure. So these are the issues in finance. Access to essential medicines. We have formulated a essential drug list which is being revised every year. We have a sole procurement agency called Karnataka State Drug Logistics and Warehouse Society. But unfortunately, it is, it is functioning as a society. We are thinking it. We are thinking in terms of making it a corporation on the models of Tamil Nadu Medical Supplies Corporation. And as I told you earlier, reforms are being brought in in the functioning of the KSDL on the model of Tamil Nadu Medical Supplies Corporation. We are introducing a supply chain management system, and e-procurement has been taken up for all procurements. But the issues. Inadequate, in spite of all this, inadequate supplies are there. PSCs and community health centers are not getting the adequate quota of medicines that they have to get. And supply is based on a yearly facility budget. We have the system of uh, a fixed drug budget for PSC, fixed drug budget for community health center, for a taluk hospital and district hospital. It doesn't take into consideration the patient load over there. So it has been a uh, facility-based budget and not on demand. There are various issues in procurement, and we need more allocation in budget. Not operating. <coughs> yeah. As for the quality and service delivery, I think we have introduced the quality assurance program, which has been looking after the RCH uh, components. ISO accreditation has been taken up in 39 facilities with the help of National Health System Resource Center. NABH accreditation is being piloted in uh, five district hospitals. Quality management systems or training are being done to the uh, departmental functionaries. We have introduced family-friendly health initiatives. And considering that the IPH norms are, have been very tall, we are trying to bring out Karnataka accreditation standards called Karnataka uh, Public Health Standards, which is being worked out. For reaching, for increasing the reach, we have mobile medical units. 105 of them are operating in the state. Then, to increase the mobility of the ANMs, we are giving vehicle uh, interest-free loans to uh, ANMs. Then, mobility allowance, rural allowance, and remote area allowance are being given. And construction or quarters are being taken up in a phased manner because lack of quarters is supposed to be an issue for in enforcing the headquarters stay of the functionaries. But the issues in quality are there are low uptake of services. We, in spite of improvement in primary health centers in the state, some of the primary health centers have become, uh, they are very, 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 very good looking after the introduction of NRHM. But we find that they are hardly used by the patient and by the community. So this low uptake of services is one of the issues. Health seeking behavior of the community has not improved over the years, as we have seen in the last two, two and a half decades. Remote area allowance, though give, being given to the department of functionaries, has not acted as a fillip to make them stay in the uh, remote areas. Headquarters stay of the functionaries, as I told you, is still an issue. Higher, high, quite uh, high rates of absenteeism, especially in the peripheral uh, health facilities. Insufficient drugs and supplies, and inadequate knowledge and training of providers. These are the issues in quality and service delivery. Monitoring and supervision, we have a well-functioning HMIS and uh, maternal and child tracking system. We are, uh, 
the HMIS section gives regular feedback to the districts on their HMIS and MCTS reporting so that they have an opportunity to correct the reporting. We have a unique system of nodal officers. Very senior state level officers are being appointed as nodal officers to uh, the, all the districts of uh, Karnataka. And in a similar way, you have a nodal officer for Taluka. Monthly reviews of PSEs and uh, uh, blocks and districts are happening. There are state level reviews conducted by secretary, mission director and commissioner every month or every once in two months, either in a physical manner, calling them to Bangalore or on a video conferencing mode. But issues are there. The supervision and monitoring though we say is occurring, it is inadequate and quality of HMIS and MCTS though has, has, has been improving over the years, still issues are there. Still we see cases of being polio reported in Karnataka. Some of the facilities are reporting cases in polio, cases of diphtheria, cases of neonatal tetanus, which are not there in Karnataka. So these issues are being tackled now. And HMIS data analysis is not happening. This is what we want the people to do and bring out some mid-course correction in their functioning so that their functioning improves and the reporting mechanism also improves and we get good reports. But this is not occurring. HMIS data Reporting only occurs and data analysis is not happening. And the reviews have been very, very perfunctory. And community process, we have good uh, ASHA force of 32,000 strong. 27,000 VHS are constituted and functioning. Uh, Arogya Raksha Samiti is there at all facilities, starting from PAC right up to the uh, state level hospitals. And planning and planning and monitoring committees are constituted at all levels by a government order. But then, the functioning of VHS and ARS is not up to the desired level. So is the functioning of the planning and monitoring committees and community monitoring, which has been one of the main pillars of NRHM, is not happening at the desired level. So Karnataka has come out with a lot of innovations. RCHHM integration, I think it was pioneered in Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. And we have a tertiary healthcare program to the poor school students of uh, uh, government and aided schools called Suvarna Arogya Chaitanya. There is this Vajapi Arogya Shri insurance scheme modeled after Andhra Rajivashri Arogya scheme. We have a Madilu postnatal kit program which is being copied by other states as of now. We have a cash incentive scheme for uh, pregnant ladies belonging to the BPL families called Prasuti RIK. Tai Bhagya which is modeled after the Chiranjeevi program of Gujarat and which is there in the northern districts of Karnataka which are not doing well in the MCH parameters. Then we have a unique program called Karnataka called uh, Retinopathy of Prematurity. This was very, for, for the first time in the country it was started by Karnataka. You are, probably you are aware that 10% of the babies born in the country are premature and out of these 10% premature babies, 10% run the risk of becoming permanently blind due to premature retinal detachment. And unless this premature retinal detachment is diagnosed in time, and a laser treatment is given, the baby is going to become blind. So Karnataka has recognized this possibility for the very first time in the country and it has been introduced in uh, uh, the northern districts of uh, Karnataka and probably in the next few years it will come down to South Karnataka also. And when then, considering the importance of nutrition, we have started the Karnataka Comprehensive Nutrition Mission Program which is being piloted in five most backward uh, talukas of the state. Then we have the Arogya Kavacha, that is the uh, emergency management response system, 108 vehicles. Community health day is being observed in the, all the facilities of the state. Then we have a unique mother-child card called Thai card. Maternal and infant death audit is occurring. Then considering the importance of neonatal, considering the importance of bringing out a decline in neonatal mortality to bring out an overall reduction in infant mortality. In the last two, three years, neonatal mortality is being focused upon. We have started the uh, special newborn care units, uh, neonatal um, uh, stabilization units, neonatal baby care corner. So these, are, these have been started in the last two, three years. Nutrition rehabilitation centers have been started and Thai Bhagya Special Assistance Scheme, which is a cash incentive scheme for the people who force them, who out of, um, uh, because certain BPL women, though uh, they are, they, though they want to go to a government hospital, may not be able to do it because in the, in the sense of, in the, the time of urgency, they may have to go to a uh, nearby private hospital and there the cost 
which are being borne by the mother or the family will be reimbursed by the state to a certain extent. And various public-private partnerships and a draft PP policy has been taken up by the government. So this is in a nutshell what is the status of Karnataka health system. And uh, uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. And any questions, probably we will discuss in the next one. Thank you. going through the entire health system, giving a status, as well as being critical, pointing out where things are not working.